three different types of instability that I think are, um, you know, hitting a lot of people and, and, and causing a lot of thoughts. Um, one is, uh, you know, the political landscape. Um, we've got a big, big election year coming up, and um, there are real consequences to the outcome of this election. And I think that creates instability because as a retiree, a lot of what is um, a lot of the entitlements, if you will, are legislated. And so when you have a change in the White House, it changes the legislation and, and so on, which uh, and, I, and a, a second broader um, uh, area of instability I want to talk about is our changes to the legislative process because there's some things on the legislative uh, horizon or agenda that have a real impact um, on the quality of, of my and other retirees retirement. And then the last one I want to talk a little bit about is um, the, uh, the stock market. You know, it's, it's interesting because it's the one thing that we that we talk about. And it's the one thing that everybody's aware of. But I, I also think it, it's the one thing that it's good to talk about it when it's good. But when it gets difficult then or unstable, then it becomes a, a, a different challenge. So let's and then we'll talk a little bit about three things that I do to deal with the instability. And, and I think you might be a little surprised. So please uh, stay to the end. So let's uh, let's start with the with the political landscape. Um, you know, what's there not to say about the political landscape this year? The, you know, Democrats had a candidate and then um, changed candidates before the convention. Um, you have a, an ex-president who really wants to turn uh, democracy and um, our form of government on its, on its heels. Um, and you have a country of people who... Um, just don't, uh, you know, that, that you just have different people that just can't talk to each other. I mean, you, Democrats can't talk to Republicans and libertarians or kind of in the, on the wings and the independents or the ones yielding kind of the influence on the election and, and some of that. And, you know, when you when you look at an election year, when you getting outside of whether a person is a Democrat or Republican, because, again, this channel is not political, but I do think everybody should get out and vote because that's what a lot of people fought for, including a, a lot of direct people in my in my lineage. But we won't talk about that more than we need to now. But, you know, when you the, the, the thing you got to really keep in mind is that when you look at a political landscape, it, there's the difference between um, right and wrong. And there's the vision for the country. And when you look at the vision for the country, a lot of the vision of the country uh, speaks to the role that government plays in people's lives. And I, I know that a lot of us say we want less um, governmental interference, and some of us say we want more governmental interference. But the fact is, when you look around the world, the, the United States of America is, um, is, is the most, um, arguably the most stable um, citizen-centric uh, government in the world. And the fact is, you're not going to make everybody happy all the time. And so there's going to be times when people think we need more government interaction. There's that, and then there's times where people think we need less. But I think when we start using the mechanisms of government as a vehicle to meet agendas that are more narrow than that of the American people, then I, I think that has a direct impact on on people's lives, and I and I think one of the areas that people don't talk a lot about is the fact that when you think of areas of governmental interference or governmental involvement in people's lives, a lot of that deals with the retired people because when you start looking at Medicare, when you start looking at uh, different types of legislation around. Um, disabilities and and just health care and and social safety nets you know most of us on this channel are in our 30s 40s and 50s and you know you've got some time to recover but when you're in your 70s and 80s you don't really have that time to recover and so it becomes uh you know when you when you deal with this level of instability because we're not in the normal instability that we've been in the past now we're you know, we're talking about 
um, we have a candidate who every time he says something, his own side will have to say, well, he didn't mean that. So whenever somebody says he didn't mean that, that's a problem. And so if you have to worry about he didn't mean that when it comes to something relative to your uh, well-being, well, that's that's a difficult situation to be in. But the other the second area that I think is important to to an important form of instability, you know, is our legislative landscape, because there's there's a couple of things that are sitting right on the edge of a lot of conversations. Um, when you look at issues of Social Security, the big conversation is, is Social Security going to be um, solvent in the 2030s? And there's a lot of conversation saying that that's not going to be the case. And so what we don't know is we don't know if um, we're going to make it to 2030 with Social Security. And so that that creates is a situation where people may not be able to afford their housing. They may not be able to afford food. Uh, do we see a, a, a housing, uh, an enhanced housing crisis on top of what we already have? Um, and those are the types of questions that, again, people in their 20s and 30s aren't thinking about, but people in their 50s and 60s and 70s are definitely thinking about because you you factor those things in um, to your expenses. And, the you know, we talk a lot on this channel about how it's not about gathering wealth or, or any of that, but it's it's more about, um, you know, your expenses. Well, if your expenses are upended in that way, that's that's a problem. Um, and Medicare, uh, the two largest costs for retirees is housing and health insurance. And so um, when we when we look at instability in the in the legislative process, you know, what are the bills that the new generations are going to want for us? What are the uh, what are the bills that are going to balance the budget? You know, we talk about balancing the budget and the deficit and all of those things. But a lot of the payments um, that the America makes are towards government entitlements for a, a host of people. And it's not just people that um, that choose not to get a job. I mean, you're dealing with uh, Social Security deals with um, disabled people and, and, a, and a bunch of across the board. Um, and so the 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 last one is the the last uh, major area of instability that I I'm talking about today is dealing with the stock market. I mean the the stock market this past week has just been getting hammered. You know you get some good news that um, inflation is down, and then the stock market gets hammered. And for a lot of us, um, our passive income for streams are the uh, dividends that we get paid on our stocks. So um, it's and, and then there's this talk of a possible recession. You know, one of the things that my wife and I have always done a good job of is we've always not just listened to what's directly in front of us, but listen and plan for the things that can happen in the future. And so as it relates to the recession piece, we're not as worried because we've got a, a decent size emergency fund. But again, this is where things like having a retirement uh, emergency fund becomes incredibly important because you've got to be able to uh, offset some of those losses because that sequence of returns risk is real. You hit a recession and you start losing five, ten percent of the market. You've got a challenge, and so, um, so those, so those are the three major pieces of instability that I'm referring to as it as it relates to, you know, our current time and. You know, it's funny because then the question becomes, well, Sabado, you know, you're a new retiree. All these things are happening. What are you going to do? It's going to be. And, and, you know, here's my three focus areas, folks. You know, it's <clears throat> and I've gone all this time and except for one uh, period of my life, I never found myself really on the brink. And it's because I've planned and I, I stuck to the plan. And so the three areas that I have or my three focus areas as it relates to this time of instability is number one. Uh, my wife and I are scheduling an Alaskan cruise. Um, you know, when in doubt, get out. So we're gonna we're gonna schedule. I don't know a ten day, fifteen day cruise uh, up to uh, Alaska. Go see the Inside Passage. Go see the railway. Go see some bears. Go see some glaciers, um, and just go see all those things that make life beautiful. Because at the end of the day, there's not a lot that I can do to change those areas of instability. And as part of our expense pattern, we have vacations. Uh, baked into them, so we keep a uh, a pretty solid uh, um, um, 
budget. And it, it really helps us. Um, it really helps us stay on track. And so there's nothing that says that it's going to be any different. Um, and the money's already there and we've, we've already saved for it. Um, the, the second thing I'm doing uh, to deal with the instability is working on scheduling next year's annual guys trip. Uh, many of you realize that this past year I went on a couple of trips. One trip, uh, I went on a guys fishing trip. We went to Galveston, Texas, did some deep sea fish and caught some redfish and a bunch of other fish. It was a great time. Great time. And Galveston, this was right before um, the floods and all of that. It was it was interesting because we went out, I think it was in April. The weather was good, but you could see it was cooling down, which was uncharacteristic for April in Texas, at least based on my experience. Then two weeks later, it had those torrential floods. So it's it was just insane. But getting out and just spending some time, my best friend and a couple other buddies of mine, and we just go do some fishing, hang out, see a town, see some place that our our wives aren't necessarily interested in going. So the idea is how do we find destinations that are fun for us, but not fun for our wives? You know, if we we could talk about going to Hawaii or Mexico or Puerto Rico or Grand Cayman or something like that. But those are places I want to go with my wife. So those come off the list. They can go. I'm not. But again, focusing on the annual guys trip because it's it's just it's fun to do. It's It's something that gets my mind off of things and it's uh, and it's not incredibly, those are not incredibly expensive because everything is, is on a budget. And then the, the last one, the last thing I'm going to do to deal with this area of instability is focusing on our RV trips. You know, many of you know, and I, I think from my last trip, I, I had a, a trip where I went with a couple of guys who we went fishing, but my wife and I have a, have an RV and it's what we do is most people go RVing. Uh, in the summertime when it's hot and, and all that. And we're the opposite. Um, and part of the reason for that is because where we live, it gets up into the hundreds. I mean, like 105, 110. And so the last thing you want to have in an RV is have your air conditioner break or something uh, of that nature. And so what we decided was instead of going in the summertime and risking our health and the health of, the health of our cat, um, if something were to happen in the RV, why don't we RV in the spring and in the fall and winter uh, when it's not too hot and, and where we can still get some decent weather? Because, again, out here in California, it's always fairly nice anyway where we live. But we could get out and do that during the winter. And then during the summer, we find cooler places to go and visit. So, you know, like a Hawaii, Hawaii, I'm sorry, not Hawaii, Alaska. Alaska is not going to be uh, super hot. I mean, I don't I, I think it gets up into the 80s at, for short periods of time, but it's never you know, you're not dealing with 110, 115 degree temperatures. And so, you know, so we're going to take a look at doing some of those trips then. So because we're not we don't have any kids living at home, we don't have to worry about um, having to go into the office or any of the normal types of concerns that people have when they're reti- when they're vacationing our thing is let's get away from the crowds and have a great trip and be able to really spend our time focused on that trip and so that's what that's going to allow us to do so so when you when you look at all of this instability the moral of the story is we can there's a lot of stuff going on in the world and there's always a lot going on in the world um, and that's why presidents seem like they age so fast because there's so much going on in the world and the question you got to ask yourself is how much of that can you actually affect? And when I when I look back at it, I, I think to myself, you know, would I rather worry about stuff that never comes to pass and then have to deal with the stress of having worried about something that never came to pass? Or do I focus on living my best life? And then if something bad does happen, then I deal with that then. But in the meantime, continue to live my live my best life. Now, don't get me wrong. If things start to go to hell in a handbasket, we may change our um, approach. But I, I just don't see that happening today, tomorrow, or anytime in the next uh, immediate period of time. And so we're just going to continue to do the things that it is that, that we need to do. Because, you know, we may we may not have some of the challenges that I think we we could have it. It may not get as bad as it looks, or as it could. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, I, I think it it's 
um, there's still a chance something's going to happen. So it's important to plan, but it's not important to overdo it. So, so it's just interesting. So you know, you talk about instability. I, I take a look at my, take a look at my music room, and how that fell apart. Literally, um, I'm looking around at the world and I see all this instability in the world, and it's just funny because again, one of the things that I talk a lot about is that um, the wisdom of the universe tends to coalesce around the right idea, even if it's not what you want to hear. And I certainly didn't want to hear that my music room was uh, fall, had fallen apart. But it, it could be worse, because uh, the first question I've been getting from those around me is, were you in there? And I said, no. And th so I think the fact that I wasn't in there is a, is a good thing. So, uh, so that's about all I had. Um, you know, I, I always like to... Uh, suggest you know if you if you like the channel if you like what we talked about if you found any of this helpful or useful um you know consider uh subscribing to the channel we um well it's not we it's me and my executive producer who's my wife and she makes sure that i'm not too far off the rails on on any one topic but you know the idea is you know again to, to try to put up information for people that may be helpful for some to gain some perspective on getting to a place where they're living their best life again i don't i don't subscribe to the idea that everybody's got to retire and i don't think there's anything wrong if you don't but i do think it's important that we live the best lives that we can and so how do we get there we get there by saving our money by making good decisions and trying to do the right thing by our fellow human beings if we do that then we're in good shape um, but again, on that note, I think I'll, I'll let you get back into whatever it is that you're doing on this beautiful day. Uh, I've got to head to the hardware store to start working on my new project. And it's the good thing is, is because I'm retired and have the time, it's just a project of something to give me to do with my time as opposed to uh, getting in the middle of something else. So, all right. Well, on that note, um, have a good rest of your day, and uh, I will talk to you soon.